I'm now joined by Buster Olley from ESPN. Buster, how did they get in this situation, and what do they do now? Well, they stopped hitting, and I'm sure since you're here in Detroit, there were times during the course of the regular season where you saw them go through periods like this, but it doesn't look like they're facing overwhelming pitching. They do seem to have been overcome by their own anxiety and their anxiousness at the plate. Now, in the offseason, it was all about boosting this lineup, and then the trade deadline, they got Anibal Sanchez. That paid off last night. What does this mean now? Well, they have to get different parts of the lineup going, and in particular, I mean, let's face it, Prince Fielder, who's struggling, and Miguel Cabrera, three for 19 for those two guys. Johnny Peralta, they got to get going, all the different support groups. It's been uh, a collapse that actually reminds you a lot of what happened with the Yankees. In fact, when Jim Leland was talking after Game 3 and he was saying, you know, I feel like our pitching's pretty good and we're not getting blown out. I, I had Joe Girardi's voice in my head just from a week before. We'll see if they can turn it around. Now, does it surprise you what's happened in the World Series? Because in the ALCS, they weren't hitting, but they were overshadowed by the Yankees. No question. I picked the Tigers in five. Uh, I thought that uh, they had a huge advantage having the rotation lined up. Uh, and ready to go with Verlander in game one. I thought the rotation was better on paper, and I still believe that, uh, than the Giants' rotation, but they simply haven't hit, and they certainly haven't gotten the pitching they expected. Now, what does Leland say? Can you say anything, or just is it go get him? Well, he told us today he's actually going to meet with his team, and you know he doesn't meet with his players a lot, uh, but he said, look, it's not, you're not, it's not failure if you strike out. It's not failure if you make an out. He would not be saying those things and making a point if he didn't think that these guys weren't putting a lot of pressure on themselves when they come to the plate. So is champagne going to pop in uh, the San Francisco clubhouse tonight? Every single prediction I've made from the beginning of the year to now has been wrong. <laughs> so I, I really don't I don't have a feel for it. If you're the Giants and you look at it individually, you get Max Scherzer, who's throwing the ball great in game four. If you get that one, you get Verlander, game five, and you can sort of paint a journey. But like Leland said, they got to start hitting. Matt Cain. Giants couldn't ask for a better guy in the mound. What do you see from him tonight? It's interesting because in talking with scouts, they say that his stuff right now is not as good as it's been in the past, that his stuff is flat. He doesn't have a good breaking ball. There's some suspicion that his arm's tired, maybe he's uh, nursing an injury. But with, uh, we saw with Madison Bumgarner, it seemed like if you throw 89 miles an hour down the middle of the plate, there's no guarantee the Tigers are going to hit. All right, Buster, I thank you very much. Therese? As Buster only heard here first, it's do or die for the Tigers reporting from Comerica Park, Will Kunkel.